Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Philip Van Dusen and today I'm going to show you 15 trends in graphic design for 2019. Now trends are movements in design that have gained mass enough usage that they become recognizable as a trend. They might have started off slow and been coming on for a number of years before they gain enough momentum to be considered a trend. Very few things in design have never been done before, so some of these things feel like they're referential of earlier movements of design. In fact, Dada, Russian constructivism, movements in design which are still very present and visible in the design world go back over a hundred years. Styles can be revisited, they can be reinvented. So when I talk to designers, I encourage designers to use trend as inspiration, as a jumping off point to make it their own rather than just to copy directly. Trend is meant to keep you inspired. It's meant to keep you thinking in a contemporary way. So designers, you can consciously ignore trends if you want, if that's what you choose to do, but being aware of what they are is critically important. And for entrepreneurs and business owners, it's helpful to understand what's out there in trend because you can use them or advocate them in your companies, your businesses to improve your brand's design and keep it looking contemporary. That's really important for brand perception. So with that, let's jump right into it. The first trend I like to call the darkness. Apple's just come out with its new operating system, Mojave, which for the first time offers a dark mode. The darkness is kind of uh, exemplified by deep, rich blacks, black on black in many times. Sometimes the blacks are differentiated from each other by texture or by gloss. The dark colors in products communicate luxury or premium. Uh, they can also communicate radical feelings or punk or biker. It can communicate a sense of ominousness or fear or mystery. It's a very interesting trend and one that I'm really seeing out there a lot. Trend number two is that so metal. The cost of metallics is lowering and because of that the bar to entry if you want to use them has come down. Metallics communicate premium and wealth or in some cases metallics can communicate cheap or glitzy. They create a contrast in design and texture to you know paper stock or to other sorts of substrates. It can be used in typography, it can be used on large flat services to offset typography or line work. Um, silver is often used off black or gray. Gold is often used off black, but also off warm uh, colors like brown and purple and maroon. The third trend is inked. Inked is hand-painted brush strokes, watercolor, inked blacks and grays. It's contrast generally with some very clean type and it brings a level of humanity to design. So when you're always working with fonts and photographs, things can get a little sterile, a little inhuman. So this hand painted brush stroke can really bring a level of humanity and touch to your designs. It creates a level of energy and movement to static layouts. And there's a huge range of this sort of brushwork going on from sloppy to splattered to calligraphic to painterly to even childish. So this is a really interesting trend that has a lot of legs for usage across broad categories. Trend number four is Neo Geo. Now Neo Geo was actually an art movement or a Neo geometric conceptualist art movement in, that was started in 1986. It was influenced by earlier movements like minimalism and pop art and op art and it has hints of Memphis design a little bit I think and it can be playful or it can be austere and conceptual. Um, there, it's often uh, exhibited with bright colors, it can be you know, abstract blocks and shapes, it can be geometric illustrations, it can be 3D approximations of specific shapes. It's a really interesting trend that I'm seeing exhibiting itself in a whole lot of different areas and in a whole lot of different ways, but they have this common thread. Trend number five is Moto Logos. I've totally butchered that Italian pronunciation, but Moto means motion in Italian. And design and graphics in the world are increasingly moving. So designers really can't ignore animation anymore. They have to add it to their skill set to remain competitive. So many companies are starting to animate their logos. We have to know how to understand and use movement, or at least understand how a design could move if you're designing a static design, what it could look like in motion. Marketing is about getting attention and movement draws the eye. It brings attention. So it also adds a level of whimsy and fun to a logo that may seem very static. Trend number six is Mary Jane. 
Recreational use of marijuana is getting more and more prevalent, and in fact, it's legal in eight states in the United States now, and more are on the way. There are entire design agencies that specialize in pot company ID and marketing. There's a huge explosion of packaging in the marijuana industry. It's basically a gold rush of startups. Imagine if the entire alcohol industry was to start over from scratch. What a huge industry that would be, and that's what the marijuana industry is, and it's in its infancy. So there's a lot of inventive and contemporary design going on, a whole lot of packaging, and all of the marketing collateral that follows a brand category will follow. So this is a trend you definitely want to keep your eyes on. Trend number seven I call warp speed. Great design, as I said, attracts attention. It attracts eyeballs. It plays with optical perception. So it increases the length of time a person will look at a design. It's also got an element of fun and playfulness. So again, the theme of movement and velocity is happening, but it's happening in static artwork. Lots of times with text where it's being warped in order to create a sense of movement or a sense of optical space. And trend number eight is called optics. And in many ways, like the warp speed trend, this is optic art. It's optical art. It's tricks of perception. It gets people to look longer in lots of, well, lots of ways it can be kind of trippy or psychedelic, but it can also be kind of tech and scientific. So it's an interesting trend that has a lot of variations that can be played with, but it's all based on this kind of optical play of space and movement. Trend number nine I call color fields. Color fields feels a little like the periodic table of elements, in my opinion. There's lots of Helvetica, it's very minimalistic, but it's not necessarily austere. I think the large fields of color offset that kind of sterile typography treatment. And it's large uninterrupted color fields and large letters, simple sans serif fonts, as I said, lots of Helvetica, poppy colors, add energy and add a lightheartedness, taking, uh, taking it away from that seriousness. It's tasteful, but it's not boring or austere or stale. Very interesting trend. Trend number 10 I call Dada. Dada was an art movement of the European avant-garde in the early 20th century. It happened around the same time as Russian constructivism. So the two movements pull off different elements of each other. The idea behind Dada was that artists were rejecting logic, they were rejecting reason, they were injecting the modern aestheticism of capitalist society. So they were expressing a sense of nonsense, a rage, irrationality, an anti-bourgeois protest. So it's a very interesting movement. It's kind of chaotic, it's haphazard, it's rule-defying, has a kind of a punk feeling to it. But Dada is a really, really interesting uh, design movement that's kind of re-expressing itself in the market. Trend number 11 I call product pattern. Product pattern is exemplified by the use of CAD textile patterns across product lines that have a broad range of SKUs. They use the patterns to differentiate flavors in large line assortments. It's being used a lot in chocolate, it's being used a lot in cosmetics and ice cream and even alcohol. The customer can experience or express a level of personal style with the choice that they make with the product and it creates kind of a warm emotional essence when you look at a range of products together that have these disparate patterns. It creates a sense of personality and it's very eye-catching on shelf. So this is a really, really interesting trend. Trend number 12 is moving mail. I don't know about you, but I've been getting a whole lot of emails that include animated GIFs or animations that are sometimes very long playing. They feel like movies almost. Animated logos. I'm seeing even in conservative publications like the New York Times, their mobile app, they're using uh, animated editorial illustrations. There's all sorts of animated ads out there. More people are coding things specially so you have automated uh, movies and email. So again, everything is moving. Designers and business owners have to be conscious of the fact that things that used to be static are starting to move. And so if you're a designer, you really have to get up to speed with how your work is going to live in the moving world. And as a business owner and entrepreneur, you have to figure out how are you going to utilize that level of design in the work that you do and in the marketing that you do. Trend number 13, I call cut-ups. 
It's kind of like the photo masking trend in my 2018 trend video, but it's different in the fact that it's a little more collage-like. It's a little more abstract. It's a little more radical and eye-catching. It's being used a lot in fashion retail and in beauty and in lifestyle magazines and also in editorial illustration. On the upper right here is an ad from Stocksy, the stock photography house. On the upper left is a work by Amit Namani, a subscriber of mine and a very talented designer and collage artist. And in the center top, the, the palm head design was done by Magdale Lopez, who's also a subscriber who sent that along to me. So it's very interesting that I'm getting stuff from subscribers too that are signing themselves to these trends that I'm seeing. Really beautiful work. Trend number 14 I call apothecary. Apothecary is exemplified by what is to me kind of reminiscent of old apothecary labels. Very minimalistic design, mainly black typography on white with huge amounts of white space, very austere feeling. It's being used a lot in beauty and in health and beauty aids and in perfume, but it's also being used a lot in packaging and marketing collateral. But it can also be used in print and editorial, but when it's used that way, it becomes a little less austere, a little more full of movement, a little more playful. And finally, trend number 15 I call by the numbers. Designers love a good abstract design element to play with in their layouts, and numbers definitely fit that bill. Numbers don't actually have to really mean anything. They can just look cool. But when used like in the upper left, used in architecture, they can actually mean something like a floor number or a room number. Or in the upper right, they can be used on products to differentiate between SKUs. They can be used in editorial as striking design elements to make layouts more interesting. I'm seeing big numbers being utilized in really fun and interesting ways, and it's a great trend. Now, after my video last year, a lot of people asked me, how do I learn how to do the things that are in this video? So I wanted to introduce you to a friend of mine, Daniel Scott, who's got a company called Bring Your Own Laptop. He is one of the best applications trainers out there for graphic designers. I met Daniel when I had him on as a guest in my Brand Muse interview series, and you should definitely check out that interview if you haven't. But he's a certified Adobe trainer, and he's also spoken at the Adobe Max conference. So he's very well regarded in his field, and he has some of the best training programs out there to learn design applications like Photoshop and Illustrator and Design. So if you could, help support me here on YouTube by using the affiliate link that's in the description and on the screen right right now, byol.me slash Philip. I get a small commission on the sale, but I guarantee you his prices are really great for the value that you get. Incredible courses, so definitely check him out. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on 15 trends in graphic design for 2019. And if you did, please hit subscribe below so you can see my videos when they come out. And visit me at philipvandusen.com. If you need help with your brand strategy or your brand design, reach out to me and let's see what we can do to take you to the next level. And with that, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.